If you're brand new to 3D printing and you just got yourself a shiny new 3D printer, enjoy it. Spend your time learning how to make cool stuff, designing your own models and, and dialing in quality prints. Don't waste your time upgrading it. What? No, no, so, okay. So actually though, this upgrade is super necessary. You see, I need a Z screw, a second Z screw to, to help with um, uh, Z wobble. A Z wobble. All right, okay, so I bought an Ender 3 over like a Bamboo Lab printer because it was a low cost entry point with like plenty of room to upgrade in the future. But by the time I'd set this up, I'd already watched so many Ender 3 upgrade videos like this one that I was convinced I needed to upgrade it right away. But do you know what those videos don't show you? How much time you waste upgrading and fixing the mistakes you made while upgrading your printer. Well, this one does. Inspired by Scott Yujan giving his gear a birthday, I took it one step further. I present to you, Diesel Ironwood. I um, I um, used ChatGPT to come up with the name. It only took about 10 minutes but I did spend the rest of the afternoon after that coming up with a whole backstory. He's the, the son of a, a blacksmith and a carpenter. I bought this before my printer even arrived. I was excited and it, it seemed like a cheap and easy upgrade. Turns out it wasn't quite as easy as I was expecting. You gotta run the wires down here. You gotta get underneath. Didn't even know how to like turn the printer over without breaking something. And then you gotta wire it right into the main board. It was super fiddly. I was terrified I was gonna break something. But you know, now I can... So... Printing your own 3D printer mods is never a waste of time. The side spool mount was not only the first mod that I printed and put on my printer, it was actually the first model I downloaded and printed at all. And it was the subject of my first ever video that I made about my printer. This side spool mount by Nick Gax, this guy, is the first proper print I did on my brand new Ender 3 V2 Neo. After a bunny and a benchy, of course. So instead of having filament feeding from the top of the printer, now it feeds from the side of the printer. See? And that's that's better for some reason. So yeah, I put it on my Instagram. Oh yeah, I have an Instagram. Link in the description. If you got a Bowden tube set up, then you gotta upgrade to Capricorn tubing. It's it's more flexible, it's like slippier, and and it's more durable. So if you're gonna print with something like metal, it's one of the parts that you need to replace, like Felix mentioned on my last video. You wanna know a secret? I didn't um I didn't upgrade my printer parts before I printed with metal. The thing was I knew I was gonna upgrade them and so I figured why don't I just print now? ruin all the old parts and then then upgrade and it, it worked fine but don't tell anyone anyway i bought my one from aliexpress and to be honest it might not even be legit it didn't come with the little like pneumatic coupler things that you need to connect it at each end it didn't even come with a, a tube cutter so the first time i tried to install it i couldn't so i had to order those things and wait for them to arrive and then i installed it and the install went okay I think, but I made a big mistake. I tried to upgrade two things at once. Is an all metal heat break really better than the standard heat break that comes on an Ender 3 or Ender 3 clone? Chuck Hallibuck thinks so, and so do a lot of other people. So I went online and found one that looked exactly like the one that he has in his video and it swapped it out at the same time as I swapped out the Bowden tube. I carefully followed Chuck's tutorial step by step and it was it was pretty stressful and quite difficult but I managed to swap it out without breaking anything and without burning myself significantly. So I was pretty happy with that. And then the stringing started. I did so many calibration parts. I followed Chuck's instructions. I made sure I'd installed everything correctly. I was 
on Teaching Tech's GitHub following his uh, calibration guide. I was doing my the PID tuning, changing all my retraction settings and speeds. And is there something wrong with the heat break? Is it the Capricorn dodgy tubing? Like what's going on? And eventually I just put the original heat break back in and it got better. But then I noticed, hold on. Okay, so this, this here is the original heat break and this is the one I bought, but this one, or the one in here, is the one that Chuck suggested. Now these look exactly the same from the outside. Chuck doesn't specifically mention this, but in the heat break that he uses, the Bowden tube can go in down about 15 mils. Whereas on this one, the Bowden tube barely goes in five mils. So I jumped online and made sure I was buying the exact correct one and finally got that installed. And yeah, it was better. I still had to do a bunch of dialing in. And you reach a point when it comes to like calibrating and dialing and printing out test towers where my brain just melts. I knew I wanted to make videos about 3D printing. And if you're gonna make videos about 3D printing, you need sweet time lapses. And if you need sweet time lapses, you need Octolapse. And for Octolapse, you need Octoprint. And for Octoprint, you need a Raspberry Pi. Well, you don't need one, but it's a good way to do it. And I was super excited about this because I really wanted to get a Raspberry Pi, not just for like Octoprint, but for so many other cool projects and cool stuff you can do with them. There's so many guides online about how to set up Octoprint on a Raspberry Pi that it was actually relatively easy to do. I mean, yes, I did break it a, a little bit, technically. The point is, I got it working. I set it up, I customized it, and I'm really happy with it. All that I have is just this little warning up in the corner telling me that my firmware can't talk back to Octoprint, but that's fine. I'm sure it won't bother me at all. Octolapse, on the other hand, was and is a bit trickier. I've got it set up and technically it works and it takes time lapses, but I can't get it to take a good time lapse whilst also not kind of messing up the print a bit. So I still have to dial that in. On the plus side, thanks to Octoprint, I can wirelessly print to this printer now, but I hardly ever do. Mostly I still just use the SD card because I always set it up when I want to use it and then take it apart and put this away somewhere safe when I'm done because, well, I've already broken it once and I still haven't printed a case for this thing. Actually, do you know what? Let's get that sorted right now. I'll just jump into printables and find myself the most popular Raspberry Pi case. Thank you, Sneaks. And thank you, Hasty Mantis, for this remix to fit my chunky fan. And seeing as how my one printer is busy printing a stupid thing for the end of this video, let's use the sponsor of this video, PCBWay. I'll just drag and drop these STLs onto their website to get an instant quote. Pick my quantity and material. Ooh, ABS. I can't print with that. I'm going with ABS. I only need one of these, but it would be no more effort on my end if I wanted them to print 100. I could even get them to print it with metal. But, you know, I wouldn't do that, right? That would, that would be silly. Nice. Thanks, PCBWay. Man, I still can't believe they sponsor me. Okay, all right, all right. So, so here's what happened. I printed out a test piece and it fit fine. And then I printed them all out in the wrong size. I printed them all out again in the right size and I did the sanding and the staining and then they didn't fit. But I had wasted so much time printing them out and sanding and staining that I was very prepared to waste a whole shitload more time just trying to jam them in. I filed each one down individually and I just pushed them in. I just rarely jammed them in there. I used a hammer to knock them in and um, I only broke one. But like I said, 3D printed mods, never a waste of time. I haven't printed anything tall since that one crappy rubbish bin. And honestly, it looked fine. So why do this upgrade? I'll tell you why. Because the day I set this up, the Ender 3 V3 SE came out. 
and that has dual z-axis screws and my friend Corey bought an Ender 3 V3 SE and my friend Corey has dual z-axis screws I want dual z-axis screws so I've had this kit lying around for a while and I thought what better time to do the upgrade than when I'm currently working on a project and have video deadlines I printed these little pin test thingies before and after to see if the Z-wobble improves and as you can see, or can't because I printed them in black, it's uh, it's really not changed at all or possibly got a little bit worse so I also added these little anti-backlash nut thingies that I can guarantee you I didn't need to install but now I can't move this manually so that's a nice loss of functionality see you later OG build plate covered with the evidence of past mistakes hello shiny new supposedly improved PEI build plate according to everyone apparently with a YouTube channel and an Ender 3 yellow springs are better than grey springs but of course silicone spaces are, 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 are better than that I bought a thermal pad from Aliexpress and stuck it on and then instantly realized that I should have left a gap for the spaces so I had to cut it and peel it off and then I realized that the thermal pad was too thick and it was scraping on the stepper motor so that's annoying and then I just put it all back together and leveled the bed and did a bit more bed leveling but now that the bed was level I wanted it to stay that way so I found these special clicky wheels designed by uh, the Bo Chan. Anyway, they give you this like tactile feedback when you're dialing in the levels and then because of these little nubs, they stay in place once they're set. So I printed them out. Actually, do you know what? What is this error? As far as I can tell, if you're gonna flash custom Marlin firmware on your Ender 3, then MRISCO C's professional firmware is absolutely the way to go. And most importantly for me, it means that the Ender 3 can talk back to Octoprint and get rid of that annoying message. But flashing custom firmware of any type on your printer is, is not for inexperienced beginners. I should have just ignored the error. My printer was working fine. It did everything I needed. The auto bed mesh leveling. I couldn't get it to work. I just still haven't been able to get the auto mesh bed leveling to work. It's such a great feature. It's one of the reasons I wanted the firmware in the first place and I can't get it to work. In the end, after weeks of trying and going back to the old firmware and then trying this firmware again, I've had to dial in manually most of the points on the mesh leveling. But it prints pretty good now and it's been solid for a couple of months. And thanks to these clicky wheels, I haven't had to change anything. But um, but now I've got black spaces. Oh, and I also got another little thermal pad which should actually fit, so. So I've replaced the spaces and the thermal pad and honestly, that wasn't too difficult. I feel like I've taken this beard off like five times at this point. But that bed leveling, man, again, I spent hours just re-leveling the bed and dialing in my first layer. Honestly, if you have any idea of how I can get the auto mesh bed leveling to work on this firmware, please let me know in the comments. It would be awesome. Come on, button tube setups are so last year. So the Creality Sprite Extruder is a, apparently a pretty good, well-regarded, cheaper extruder uh, but that didn't fit my printer and recently Creality came out with this which is like the sprite extruder but a bit more shit. Installing it wasn't too hard but it did take some time you got to take the old extruder off here you got to put the new one on here which I, don't, I know that doesn't sound very complicated but it it is complicated when you're So with the extruder gone from here, I needed to do something to deal with these cables. And the perfect solution is a simple zip tie. But why would I do that? 
the build bay came out with this ridiculously over-engineered solution. It's even got a bearing in it and I absolutely love it. It is way more complicated than it needs to be, but it looks super cool and I 3D printed it and 3D printed mods are never a waste of time. And then the final piece, something I actually designed myself. I found when I was doing the bed leveling that when this got all the way over here or to the opposite end, all these cables kept getting squished between the frame and the extruder. And honestly, I thought that might have been one of the things causing my bed leveling issues. So I designed a real simple, super basic little router that just bolts onto the side of the extruder and routes the cables out the back. And because it really doesn't deal with any pressure or heat, you can just print it out of PLA. Or, or, and go with me on this, let's just say you designed this yourself and it was useful and you thought that's cool, maybe other people will like it. So you uploaded it to Thingiverse and Printables and some people did like it and they used it themselves and posted makes online and you were kind of proud of it. And then, okay, let's also say, and admittedly this part is pretty unlikely, let's say you started a YouTube channel and PCBWay offered to sponsor some of your videos then maybe you could ask them to print it out in titanium. <sighs> Insanely unnecessary. Perfect. Oh, and I also made this. Maybe some 3D printed mods are a waste of time.